DBT, Distress Tolerance 1. In our previous sessions, we had a good look at the acceptance skill of mindfulness. Now we're going to be moving on to the next acceptance skill, which is distress tolerance. If we look back at the DBT model you've seen before, you can see that although we might be accepting the pain, it doesn't mean that things need to stay the same. The change happens when we turn the suffering that can't be tolerated into pain that can be tolerated. Distress tolerance does build upon mindfulness skills as we're observing changes in our emotional states and accepting reality as it is, non-judgmentally and without trying to change it. This doesn't mean we may like or approve of the situation, but the aim is to learn to tolerate pain and suffering. It may be useful here to remember the quote, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. So pain will never be able to be avoided or eradicated because attempting to accept this and trying to change the unchangeable is impossible and will only lead to more suffering. Today we will look at surviving and doing well in crisis situations without having to resort to behaviours that make the situation worse. We need crisis survival skills when we can't change the situation for the better and when we can't manage our feelings well enough to deal with the situation effectively. In simple terms, pain plus non-acceptance equals pain, suffering and feeling stuck. Pain plus acceptance equals pain and the possibility of moving forwards. When we use crisis survival skills, we're working towards becoming free. We're truly free when we can be at peace and content with our lives, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. There are six crisis survival skills in total, but the ones we'll focus on today are stop and pros and cons. Crisis situations are short term, so these skills should not be used all of the time or as a lifestyle. They're not going to be a cure to all of life's problems. The goal of crisis survival skills is to get through a crisis without making the situation any worse. There are times when it's appropriate to distract yourself from pain or intense emotions such as upset, anger or rejection in order to be effective. For example, in a meeting or at work or at school. These are all situations where the emotions will have to be dealt with eventually, but initially it might be better to distract yourself from them. Sometimes people might be too preoccupied with proving to others how bad the situation is to care about surviving or being effective. This, however, only leads to short-term gains, for example, going into hospital or getting a friend's attention, and long-term consequences such as negative emotions or relationship difficulties. You know that you're in a crisis when the situation is highly stressful, it might be short term, and there's intense pressure to resolve the crisis now. You should use crisis survival skills when you have intense pain that can't be helped quickly. You want to act on your emotions but it will only make things worse. Or when emotion mind threatens to overwhelm you and you need to stay skillful. The first set of skills are the stop skills. These help you to refrain from acting impulsively. The S in stop stands for stop. So when you feel your emotions are about to take control, do just that. Stop. Don't react. Don't move a muscle. Just freeze. Freezing for a moment helps to prevent you from doing what your emotion wants you to do, to act without thinking. Stay in control and remember you are the boss of your emotions. You could even visualise a stop sign in your head when you want to stop from reacting to a situation. Now let's think of an example. So if you were at the supermarket and someone was to do something to provoke your anger, such as calling you a name or cursing you, you may have an urge to physically or verbally retaliate, which could make you feel better in the short term, but the long term consequences could result in you being hurt, arrested or fined. So stop. Don't act on the urge you may have. The T in stop stands for take a step back. When faced with a difficult situation, it might be hard to respond effectively straight away, especially when in emotional mind. So take a step back mentally, and maybe even physically. Take some deep breaths to regain some control and find wise mind. Remember you are not your emotions, so don't let it push you over the edge. Following on from the last example, if someone called you a name or cursed you and you did retaliate, like we said, you'd probably get into trouble for it. Instead, physically stepping back from the situation, or perhaps walking away, would avoid any confrontation. O stands for observe. This is where you use your mindfulness skill. Essentially what you want to do is to look at the situation as if you've pressed the pause button. Notice what's around you. What are other people doing? Who's involved? Notice your urges. 
To make effective decisions, it's important not to jump to conclusions. Instead, understand the relevant facts to understand what's going on and what the options are. Use your mindfulness skills of observing and non-judgmentalness. The P in STOP stands for Proceed Mindfully. Ask yourself, what do I want from the situation? What are my goals? Always keep your end goal in mind. So like in the previous example of being in the supermarket, just remind yourself of what you're there to do and think about what effects your actions could have on your goals of getting your shopping done. In deciding what to do, consider your thoughts and feelings, the situation and other people's thoughts and feelings. Ask your wise mind which actions will make things better or worse. Consider the consequences. Can you think of any examples of where using stop skills would be effective? For example, maybe to de-escalate an argument or prevent an argument from happening in order to get somewhere effectively? I'm sure there's lots of examples of where you can use these stop skills. The next skill we're going to look at is pros and cons. Pros and cons are useful when we need to make a wise decision between two or more options and think about the advantages and disadvantages of a certain situation. Do you remember the example we discussed in group? We talked about a friend texting to cancel a visit to see another friend. Instead of the friend who'd been let down replying straight away in an upset state, she stopped and had a look at the situation for a minute and weighed up the pros and cons of replying with an angry message. Although her emotional response of upset at feeling rejected and let down was very strong, she weighed this up with her friend potentially never visiting again and was able to see the reasons around why in fact her friend might not have been able to visit that weekend. Her wise mind response texted back and said that she was sad her friend was unable to make it but understood that she needed to stay home and instead asked when she was next available. Pros and cons help us to resist impulsive urges in emotional mind including urges to quit, destroy or react unhelpfully. So today we've looked at the stop skill and pros and cons that can be used in a crisis situation. See if you can think of some situations you've experienced where these skills would have been useful and maybe produced a more effective outcome than the one that did happen. Next session we'll be looking at wise mind accepts and the tip skills. These are skills we can use to distract our mind when we're in crisis.